credit card numbers, birth dates, phone numbers, names, addresses, passport numbers. What do they all have in common? Cloud DLP can protect them all. How does it do it? Stay tuned to find out. So, by now, you know that de-identification can be accomplished with a few different techniques, each with their own benefits and features. But, you might wonder, how does DLP know what's what? How does it know when it spotted a phone number, for instance, in the data it processes, and how sure is it? When DLP inspects data, the results for any matches include a certainty score that we call the likelihood. The likelihood can be one of five scores that range from very unlikely to very likely. Likelihood is important because it lets you fine tune the scope of your de-identification and weed out potential false positives by setting a confidence threshold based on likelihood. How is likelihood determined? Well, for each of the 120 built-in info types, this score is determined differently depending on the corresponding info type detector. That's the detection mechanism that matches on a certain set of criteria. This criteria could include pattern matching or a checksum. It can even consider the surrounding context that can be identified in the data around the potential match. Time for an example. Take a look at this string. What do you think we're looking at here? Well, it could be a job title followed by an arbitrary identification number. On the other hand, it could also be a person's name and a phone number. When we run this through a DLP inspection job, as expected, we get two info type matches. Kitty Walker is identified as the info type person name with a likelihood score of likely, and the 10 digit number got matched to phone number with a likelihood score of possible. Now, let's take a look at the same data with some positive context mixed in. For us, it's a lot more obvious what we're looking at. And similarly, Cloud DLP considers the context surrounding the data, and the likelihood score jumps to very likely for both person name and phone number. DLP's use of context makes it especially effective for conversational text and transcripts. Once data is inspected and classified by info type and likelihood, DLP can then apply de-identification. So, let's talk about one of the most basic forms of de-identification, redaction. What's redaction? When working with text, redaction completely removes the sensitive values from your data without a trace. Poof, it leaves no clue as to what was removed. Let's see how the DLP API handles redaction by looking at a request from a Node.js app. When we use a DLP API to inspect content, we construct a request object that looks like this. In the request, we of course specify the item that we want to scan. We also provide an inspection configuration that configures the scanning process. Here, we can limit the scope by providing a likelihood threshold or any particular info types that we might want to limit our scan to. Next, there's a de-identification configuration. This is where we specify that with each match, we want to de-identify it with redaction. The response we get for this request will have the transformed data in an overview that includes a summary of the inspection and transformation for each info type found. For text, redaction is one of the most simplest forms of de-identification because it leaves no trace of what was removed. The same concept can be applied to images using image redaction. In this case, DLP uses optical character recognition to find potential text in an image and overlays an opaque bar over any suspected sensitive values. Let's take a look at another Node.js request, this time for this image. The request object is a bit different this time. We once again provide an inspection configuration where we can indicate likelihood and info types. We have the option of passing redaction configuration options here, but by default, it'll just place a black bar only on the text that it matches. And finally, we provide the image converted to a string along with the file type. The response here will be a new image, this time with bars covering the redacted data. Boom, our image has successfully been de-identified thanks to image redaction. So, whether you're working with text or images, redaction is the way to go when you want to totally and completely remove those sensitive values from your data. Although data identification redaction is powerful, 
I did mention that it's one of the most simplest forms of de-identification. Next time, we'll take a look at a more complex technique and talk about de-identification using crypto-based tokenization. See you then.